Okay, so for anyone who's seen my videos before, you probably know that I'm a big user of the Neural DSP Quad Cortex. But recently, I've been kind of itching to try out uh, some other devices, and I've been fortunate enough to be able to borrow some devices from a friend of mine who's got a Ampero 2 Stomp and an FM3 from Fractal. But I wanted to check out some of the new Tonex devices and kind of dip my toe into that world, so to speak. And luckily enough, I had a little bit of store credit with Guitar Center, and I was in my local store recently, and they had these in stock. This is the Tonex One. So this lists for about $180. Um, so I applied my store credit with this and walked out with it. And when I got it home, it was quickly apparent that I was going to need to pair this with my Quad Cortex. So I don't really have a lot of equipment. The Quad Cortex is pretty much my entire rig. I mean, right now I have one drive pedal that sometimes I put in front of the Quad Cortex. But other than that, this is my rig. And this device allows you to you know, run amp sims and a little bit of reverb, a little bit of compression. But for the most part, this is intended to go on a pedal board with a lot of other equipment in terms of effects, pedals, and maybe a power amp or whatnot. So like I said, it became quickly apparent that I was going to need to use this with this. And the more I started playing around with different configurations of how to do that, the more I found that these actually work pretty well together. So what this little device gives you basically is access to all the tone captures that come in the Tonex kind of ecosystem. And then you can plug it into this and use it along with all the effects and all the capabilities of the Quad Cortex. So let's go ahead and check this out. So we're going to spend a few minutes kind of getting acquainted with the Tonex One and kind of the Tonex app that goes with it. And then we're going to plug it in with the Quad Cortex and we're going to check it out. So let's do that. Okay, so we have the Tonex software up and running. So there's a couple of things I want to go through here that were kind of new to me and I thought I'd share them. So the first thing that I had to kind of wrap my head around is the Tonex software is not like Cortex Control, meaning the software is not, you know, you're doing configurations and it's real time pushing those configurations to the device. The way I've started to think about it is the Tonex software is a plugin and you work with the software as a plugin until you get the tones you want. And then you save those as like a preset and you can then move the preset onto the device. So you gotta think about it in that kind of two stage kind of way. It's not a real time manipulating the device and the device is doing the tone generation. The tone generation is coming from the software and then you could push it to the device. The other thing I'll mention is there's different versions of the Tonex software depending on what Tonex device you buy. So the Tonex One comes with Tonex SE, which is a kind of a less robust version of the software in terms of the amount of tone models you get access to. The larger Tonex device comes with Tonex Max, which has a lot more options uh, in terms of the amps. So for example, if I go to the presets, and let's say I go up to, there's some Dumble presets up here. So there's this Dumble preset here. It comes with the app here. Here it is. I'm using a Les Paul style guitar. If I try to go to Dumble B, it says, hey, you don't own this. You can try it. You can buy it. I want to say the Tonex Max software is like a couple hundred bucks. So the one thing that's interesting to me is the economics of how this is going to work is interesting. Um, you know, the devices are becoming less important and it's more about the software and the add-ins that you buy. And we've seen a little bit of that through the Quad Cortex in terms of buying captures and things like that. But here we see the actual device manufacturers doing that. So I think it's an interesting kind of view into maybe the future of the economics of this whole modeling world and how it's going to work. And I think I may do a whole separate video on that topic. It's real interesting. But let's go ahead and move on. So then the, there's a difference here. You've got tone models, which are like captures in a lot of ways. And when you look at the filters you can apply to these, one, you can see you've got this little switch. It's like, do I own it or do I not? And you can see there's a lot more that I don't own. And these are all just the ones that come from IK Media. Um, so you can see I only own about 250 of the almost 1200. You've got what guitar type, you have different types of models. So you can do just a stomp, 
You can do just an amp. So these do not have a cab included. You can do a stop with an amp, a amp with a cab, or one that has all three. And then you've got the different characters. So you've got clean, drive, high gain, fuzzy, and then there's other, which I'm not sure what other is. And you can see there's nothing there. Uh, I think other may be there just in case when people create their own tone models, maybe they don't categorize it right. And that's just kind of a catch all. Um, you can do the kind of stomp that you want. Um, and then there's different tiers and cabinets. So there's a lot of filters you can apply to this. And each one you look at, you know, you can look at the info for it and it'll tell you, you know, what's the amp, what's the character, the channel, the cab config, the mics used, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of good info here. And obviously, you know, you can search here, um, I don't know, just do Fender and it'll filter out the stuff that's kind of either using Fender in some capacity. So those are the models that come with the software. And then you can go to ToneNet. These are all the shared tone models. So think of this kind of like Cortex Cloud. So this is the stuff that you can go search and download. And you can see there's 23,000, almost 24,000 results right now across all the types. And the one thing I'll say is I'm finding the tone net a lot like Cortex Cloud. So all these tone models, some are good, some are bad. The volume levels vary from tone model to tone model. So, you know, there's a lot out here that's probably really good, but there's a lot out here that's eh, not the greatest, which honestly is the same as it is on the Cortex Cloud. So um, I've poked around a little bit and I grabbed a few things, but uh, I'm still kind of getting to know this. And then you know, you can create your own presets, which is where you take one of these tone models and then you can tweak it. So you can adjust the cab, so you can separate the cab. And if you wanted to, you could use your own IRs. You can see I've loaded some of my IRs in here. Um, you can add or turn off reverb. And there's uh, five different types of reverb along with the controls there. Um, you know, advanced parameters, you get a lot more control here. And then you can add in compression. It can be post or pre. And then you can add in a noise gate as well. So like if I go to my presets, I've taken a few of the models and kind of tweaked them a little bit. Like here's one that's a bad cat clean that I like quite a bit. Here's a dumbled drive. You can see I actually added my own IR to this one with the Fender 2x12. Um, here was one that was a clean, it's supposed to be a John Mayer-ish kind of thing. Um, and then this Tim Pierce Crunch is a really nice... So, you know, I'm still kind of getting to know how to make the presets, but then what you can do is if I plug in my Tonex 1, see if I go over to the librarian, I'll say my Tonex is not connected. So I go ahead and connect it up via USB. And you can see, it'll show you what's uploaded. So you can upload up to 20 presets onto the device. And then you can run it in either dual mode or stop mode. So dual mode means uh, when you press the button on the device, it switches between two different presets. Stop mode means when you press the button on the device, it just turns that preset on or off. So for instance, if you're using this just to mimic a drive pedal, you would put it in stop mode, so you would just turn the drive on and off. But we're gonna leave it in dual mode. And basically what you do is, you drag and drop um, presets onto your device like this. So if I drag this over here, I'm gonna drag it. It's the same one, I'm just kind of replacing it. It's gonna say, do you wanna replace it? Say yes, overwrite it. And then you can drag these up and down to the different slots. You can switch them back and forth. Uh, I wanna swap. So this is, as I'm doing this, the lights on the device are changing and you can change the color of the, um, of the presets so that when you switch, the lights on the device change. 
Um, but the one thing I'll say is, again, the device is just plugged in USB. The app is not really, other than sending data to the device, none of the audio is using the device at all. It's all running from the app. So again, just reiterating, this isn't like Cortex Control where it's just controlling the device and the device is generating the audio. This one, the software is generating the audio right now and the Tonex is just really kind of a hard drive right now. Um, so that's kind of the ins and outs of kind of the Tonex application and, and can generally how to use it. Let's go ahead and rehook the Tonex into the Quad Cortex and I'll show you how I've got that set up and then we'll hear some tones. Okay, so I have the Tonex hooked into my Quad Cortex in this way. So originally I tried plugging it in just in the front of the Quad Cortex and that worked fine and allowed me to put some you know, reverb and delays on the back end of it and really just use the Tonex like I would this drive pedal which is just plugged into the front of the Quad Cortex. So right now I've got my guitar signal coming into this drive pedal and then from the drive I'm going to the input of the Quad Cortex. But it quickly became apparent that the most powerful way to hook in the Tonex 1 into the Quad Cortex is to put it in the effects loop. So right now I've got this hooked into effects loop 1 of my Quad Cortex and what that allows me to do is I can basically use this as a replacement for an amp model or a capture on the Quad Cortex. And so basically it expands what the Quad Cortex can do to include all of the tone models that can come with the Tonex. And I can plug those in here and I can switch between different ones that are on this device right now. And I can also add in, you know, upfront compressors and drive pedals and even back ends, reverb and delay and flangers and choruses on the quad cortex. If I wanted to, I could even use a tone model on here that maybe doesn't have a cab included and I could use cabs or IRs on the quad cortex. So let's look into the pre how I set up the preset here and then we'll check out how the tones sound coming through the quad cortex. So let's start by going through the preset on the quad cortex. So the main thing here is the effects loop. So I'm using effects loop one. I am pulling back the send level a little bit and then compensating on the return level. I wanted a little lower level input going into the tone X and, and then I pumped up the return level in order to get the volume back. And then on the back end, you know, I've added in an analog delay with a reverb in front of it. Um, I got a little bit of flanger just to check it out. Um, I've got a drive pedal capture and a compressor on the front. So pretty typical stuff if you've ever seen any of my Quad Cortex presets. And I've got this set up in Stomp View just so we can turn these on and off and check them out. So again, on the Tonex right now, I've got two presets available, the Bad Cat Clean and then the Tim P Drive. So, you know, the clean sounds like this. using the quad cortex a little bit of delay and rebound on the back end if we go ahead and switch over to the Tim P so a nice crunch tone there but the one thing we do is we can add that so let's boost into that we'll just go ahead and flanger on the back end. So really, if you look at what we're doing, one thing I'll say is you can hear there's there's a low level piece of noise coming from the Tonex. I'm not sure how to eliminate that right now. I'm still working on that. Basically what we've done here is we've extended the quad cortex with the Tonex uh, using the effects loop. And so basically we can bring in 
all of these tone models from the Tonex world into the Quad Cortex really easily. And I think you could probably do something similar, you know, if you were using, say, a, uh, an HX Stomp or really any other device, you could pull in easily with this little Tonex pedal, you know, captures and, or tone models, I guess is what they're called, from that world into whatever other world you're playing in. So um, I'm real happy with it. It's, it's kind of cool to be able to combine the two together. You know, I'm still learning kind of the tone X and how to approach it best and how to get all the best tones out of it. For that amount of value, I, th I think there's quite a bit there. I'll continue to make some videos as, as I kind of get to know the, the tone X world better and hopefully maybe start to pull out some of my favorite tone models and, and find those things. But for now, I'm really excited to kind of the possibilities and looking forward to getting to know it better.